My topic of discussion is generic medicine, a way of happy living. Is there anyone here who has not taken a single medicine in his or her own lifetime? Can you please raise the hands? You have not taken a single medicine till now. Everyone, right? I can't find anyone who has not taken a medicine. So according to WHO, World Health Organization, there are 30,000 different diseases across the globe and out of which we have managed to treat or cure only 250 diseases based on molecular biology. According to the statistics of Drug Bank, there are 9,335 small molecule, that means chemistry based medicines and 1,227 biotech based medicines across the globe. Sounds interesting, right? There are huge number of medicines, but the diseases are very less. Do you know that discovering a new medicine is not everyone's cup of tea, right? It's not easy to make like tea. It requires $2.9 billion of investment and that too taking a risk of going that medicine into dustbin with a single adverse reaction. Such a molecule discovered for the particular disease has been granted a patent for the period of 20 years. Now, an innovator company which discovers that drug applies for the marketing approval to the regulatory authority and gets that approval for the period of five years. Company has right to set its own price to recover the investment of 2.9 US billion dollars. And that is the reason we call it as a branded medicine or innovator medicine. Now, when it comes to the expiry of the patent, that is after 20 years, many such companies who are competitors of that company start making product of the same medicine and apply to the regulatory body for that. However, in United States, you need to apply first and one, you have to satisfy the criteria of having same blood levels in the body of humans as that of the innovator one or branded one. So you can get a market exclusivity of six months. So you can market along with the branded one and your generic one. And this one who gets the first approval is called as first generic medicine. Remember the cost of generic medicine is generally one third of that of the branded one. Now let's come to our country, India. We do not have such exclusivity clause of six months or 180 days. So, we can manufacture the generic medicines immediately after the expiry of patent. Now, in India, we have many such generic manufacturing companies. So, we have many generic manufacturers and laymen or even physicians call them as brands, right? So, they are called as branded generics, okay? They are not branded medicines or innovator medicines, they are branded generics. However, patents of these medicines are not valid in India, remember that. And still, despite of the fact, they are not affordable to many people in this country. So same kind of fact was told to you few years back on one television show. So you all are aware of it. However, that's not 100% true. There are certain generic manufacturers which manufacture the medicines and supply it directly to hospitals or doctors, which we can call it as a doctor supply or the hospital generics. So you have now branded one, you have branded generics and the hospital generics. So these are the three different categories that are there now. Now, let's take an example. A diclofenac, which is a popular painkiller medicine, is available in the market by one of the reputed pharmaceutical company in India for the 3.2 rupees per tablet. Okay, this, this is the branded generics. Now, in hospital generics, the same medicine is available for 10 paisa per tablet. So that means for 10 rupees, you will get 100 tablets. So that is your hospital generics. Similar is the case with cough syrup. And here the difference is huge. Like for the one cup syrup bottle, which is 60 to 80 rupees per 100 ml, whereas for the hospital generics, 
it will be 50 rupees per liter. Now, you must be having that doubt in mind that how come they can be so cheap, do they have an appropriate quality, right? Yes, generics of both of the types, whether they are branded ones or the hospital generic ones have an appropriate quality and are being manufactured according to the good manufacturing practices, these are the standards in India and also being tested for the blood level studies in humans. Now, after this, you can see that quality is the most important concern, which is most of the times related to price. Let us take an example of common people. iOS phone versus Android phone, a traditional war, right? Or you can compare two Android phones by two different companies. Many people will have different perspectives and different doubts about it. However, this is not the case with generics. Both of the branded medicines or branded generics and hospital generics, all of the three will have same quality, safety and efficacy. Now, where is the difference in price arises? Difference in pricing arises from the profiteering of different companies. So, everyone wants to have a different pricing. Now, Pradhan Mantri Bharatiya Jana Aushadi Pariyojana is the scheme which is launched by government of India to promote the generics which are having similar kind of prices as that of the branded generics one. For this, government is giving you 2.5 lakh rupees subsidy for the opening of generic store and that is a huge amount in fact and for that they have also reduced criteria of space that is 160 square feet. So, this is kind of new initiative. However, when you think of generics or any medicine, we only think of doctors. We do not think that pharmacist is the one who is there right from the discovery of medicine until its delivery to the patient. Unfortunately, in India, role of pharmacist is often neglected. Particularly in case of generics, pharmacists are most important. Whenever you go to the pharmacy shop and pharmacist offers you alternate brands, generally patients refuse it. And here is the important key. Now, patients need to understand the difference in pricing of the branded generics and have to take a final call for it. Even doctors should start writing generic names, that is the name of that pure drug on the prescription for the people. Government of Maharashtra has insisted doctors to write the generic names on the prescription. However, the compliance to this is still questionable. Now, since last eight years, I am engaged with dissemination of information in particular to the generics through public seminars, educating budding pharmacists through pharmacy college seminars and even I have trained 8000 people for this particular cause. And now I have moved to the YouTube platform of Inclination channel to promote different medicines and in particular the generic medicine. Now, what is the difference exactly that we can create? So, my idea of promoting generics is through the pharma clinic methodology. So, let us understand what is the traditional methodology of treating patients. In the traditional setup, doctors are in charge of the facility or clinic. So, MR comes to the doctor, doctor writes the prescription, patient goes to the pharmacy shop and gets the medicine. That is a traditional one, everyone knows it. Now, in the pharma clinic, what will happen is pharmacist will be owner of that setup and pharmacist in consultation with doctors will decide what exactly branded generics or the hospital generics is suitable for the patient. And now that will be the most cost effective and even safe and effective option for the patients. But why pharmacists then? Why not anyone else? Because pharmacists, suppose you are going to the pharmacy shop and that brand is not available at the pharmacy shop, definitely pharmacist is the only one who is going to get that brand because pharmacists are licensed by Drugs and Cosmetics Act 1940 to have that license. So, that is most important 
per se, even if most of the times doctors won't suggest you alternate brand, but pharmacist is going to suggest you. In the pharma clinic methodology, doctors can also write generic names on the prescription and pharmacist can suggest you the branded generic which is suitable and cost effective for that patient. Also what we can do as doctor will write a generic name on the prescription comes to the pharmacy clinic or pharma clinic and he can dispense a required amount from the bulk pack which is of 100 or 200 whatever it is into the HDP that is high density polyethylene white colored plastic bottles which can be reused with appropriate cleaning. So that will again help our environment by reducing plastic wastage because all of our strips and blister packaging are plastics actually. So reusing the HDPs which are more sturdy can be an effective option. Here is the example. You have been diagnosed with cough and cold doctor gives you azithromycin an antibiotic. Now see what the pharmacist can make a difference. There are brands of azithromycin which are available from 10 rupees per tablet to 25 rupees per tablet. So huge difference. Here the pharmacist will play important role because pharmacist in consultation with doctor can suggest an appropriate cost effective brand or the hospital generic to the patient and that will again maintain patient's pockets. Right. In the pharma clinic, we have the pharma practice regulation. So these are pharmacy practice regulations which are launched in 2015. So these pharmacy practice regulations enable pharmacists to actually give counseling regarding safe and effective use of medicines which currently pharmacists are not doing right now. So you can get a counseling because pharmacist knows entire about right from the discovery to the delivery of the patient. So entirely these things you can get from the pharma clinics. And that is how the pharma clinic methodology will definitely help us to make safe and effective use of medicines. So let's come together, make medicines affordable and make lives of pa patients and people healthy and happy. Thank you. <laughs>